a lot of people had questions last time. Uh, um, like, what is this thing that is this, what, what does ADR do? What is a programmer? Um, how does this work? Sort of what's, what is this thing we made? How do we operate it? And so I'll start out with sort of a description, maybe some drawings about what it actually is, like what ADR dude is, what the heck a programmer is, what it does, and then I'll show you guys how to actually program these things that we sort of lost over that last time and didn't have to get them all built, which is really hard to get like 30 people or whatever to actually make this thing correct. So, um, everyone knows we have this like little black box on this breadboard and there's a bunch of things coming out of it and then it becomes a USB device. So we have this, right? And you know you have a laptop. And it's got the USB cable, right? And it's got the triangle, right? USB cable, and then uh, goes to your computer, right? Here's your computer. And this is how you guys program, right? You just put your USB in, and then you like type some stuff, you press some buttons, and it works. Um, so to actually program these devices, what you do is you press this button that's on pin one, and then you hit the program button on your computer, and then it works, right? Um, so what, what's actually happening is uh, the Arduino IDE is calling the ADRD, which is a program that's used to talk to these things of various protocols, so the USB or serial, and that tells it to, and it, it's in like programming mode, and then it tells it what to program it onto the chip, okay? So, What's actually going on here is here's your program memory, right? This part's the bootloader, and then this is just the rest of like the flash memory. And it's sort of a very, very basic thing. It just literally goes through each instruction that's written, like in order, and does that. And the way that you get things like if or for is if you skip instructions or there are instructions to tell you to go back so many steps. And so that's how you get all that complexity. Um, so if you press the button, the program counter, which is where where you are in the memory, goes from wherever it is to right here. And right there it says basically kind of wait, you know, things like something like eight seconds and blink this LED while you do this and wait for a command, the USB. And so that's, that's all happens when you press the button and it says I'm this USB device. It connects to your USB host and it gets onto the bus, which is just sort of like a way of <coughs> saying all these things that are connected to the USB port are on the bus. It's the universal serial device. Um, so now it's on the bus, it's hanging out, it's waiting for a command. It waits eight seconds, you didn't try to program with anything. It shouldn't override its flash because it doesn't have anything to put there. So it just sort of goes back to being a little brick and doing whatever it's programmed to do already. Now, if you do set it something, it will reprogram itself. However, you may wonder, how does the bootloader get onto the chip? And so this is sort of a different situation where there's no USB thing, and you have your computer, and you have the chip, and you want to put something on the chip, and you don't really know how, maybe. And this is where something like ADR Dude really comes in more handy, because now you have this thing that wants to program. And there are lots of different programmers. People will, will try and sell you things that are development boards and programmers, which basically just means they have some more hardware on there, like some LEDs or temperature sensor that you can test, that you can sort of play with very easily with your little chip that you put on there, and you can also program it. Some people will try and sell you a bare bones programmer, like the USB Tiny sort of series, which basically can only program and read back the memory from the chips. Some people will try and sell you uh, programmers with de debugging tools, so things that can stop the program while it's running on the hardware, so you can sort of like see what's going on, like read back variables and see what's actually happening on the chip. Um, but you have USB ports on your computers, right? Everyone good? Nodding? Yes? Okay, well that's good. Now unfortunately, these things were designed many, many years ago. Most of them only have serial communication. And none of you guys have serial ports on your computers, or parallel ports for printers, or anything like that. Um, the thing that's sort of the closest <coughs> shape is the VGA port, like, that doesn't do what you want to do. Um, so generally, you have some sort of USB to serial converter. Um, 
or you have a, a, a programmer that has like built-in USB. So it's in <laughs> like this. This is a program. This is a little board I had printed. It has a microcontroller on it that then programs things, but it similarly pretends to be a USB device using the USB. On the other hand, you might have something that goes to, so you either have something that directly goes to uh, a chip or some sort of programmer, or you have something that goes to a serial board, um, and you use AVRD to talk to them. So just like uh, it has like an iPod. Some people. Who's used iTunes? Wow. You guys really don't like that. So, but everyone sort of understands iTunes is the thing you use to talk to your iPod with, right? Um, so, AVR Dude is the thing that you use to talk to your program. Uh, there are lots of different things that sort of do this in everyday life. You have a thing that talks to your mouse, right? Your mouse driver. Um, so, that's what this says. AVR Dude is over here, it's on your computer, it's a program. You say ADR dude, talk to this thing, and then this thing talks to your microcontroller and program. And in this case, you wouldn't have a bootloader, you just have your flash memory, and you're using hardware that's on the chip to just put stuff into that flash memory. Um, this is less desirable because then you have to have this like programmer thing, and it gets kind of tricky because they all have slightly, you know, they all have their own quirks. Um, so we don't do that. We just have a bootloaded chip, and it's also much cheaper, because now you don't need all the parts to make a program as well. Uh, so I'll show you guys how to do this. I would like a volunteer to let me there, hopefully working for it, and then I'll put something on it. Okay. Well, does, does anyone have one that's tested? Yeah, I'm working. So, we have this thing, it's plugged into our computer. I'm going to assume this works. Um, James is assessing it. And we want to know how to program it. Before we go, does anyone have questions about that? ADR dude versus a programmer? <laughs> uh, uh, can you just reply all to the last one that I said? Um, never got that. There's like program with its hardware that talks to your computer, which has a software thing that communicates with them. This all communicates to the chip. Just sort of targeting. Okay, so a lot of junk on my desktop. Um, go ahead and like start up the Arduino thingy. Um, if you're using Linux, definitely use sudo because the anything that goes over USB generally like requires that kind of privilege and this goes over USB. And AVR dude sometimes doesn't like to do things unless you're the super user. So sudo, Arduino, whatever your password is, it's kind of like being an admin on Windows. Who can spot the spelling error? There we go. So this will pop up. Here's our nice friendly thing. If you guys have it working, definitely try this. Um, so we've got this. I'm just going to really quickly check to make sure that this is actually recognized as a USB device. Oops. And we see it down there. It's the DOTI shared ID for use with Blood USB. Um, fun fact 
the USB people who made the USB standard over there, uh, like made serial numbers, right? They said we're going to have this many, this many long hex digit numbers, and we're, we'll sell them to people so that people will have like unique numbers for their devices, and that way you can always find the driver. And they thought this was a good idea. They'll be like, ah, we'll sell you numbers for one thousand to two thousand dollars each, and then you will have your own number. You have your own like product ID number, and you'll make so much money by selling you numbers. And then some dude was like, wait, I'll just use this number because it's a number and I can do whatever I want with it. Um, and people just have started to do that. But that number, uh, VOTI bought, and then they decided, well, instead of selling the numbers for $1,000, we'll have one that we will share with everyone and then we'll sell like the subdomains of this number to other people for like 20 bucks or something. It's just kind of an amusing number selling scam. Um, but it's there, so that should work. We'll pop open our Arduino environment. We'll uh, go to examples. We'll open up everyone's favorite example, which is Blake. Um, so, the first thing you want to do is select the correct port. Because if it thinks you're programming something connected to a serial port, it will be a pain in the butt. And it won't do it, because it's not connected to a serial port. So you go ahead, tools, board, and uh, go all the way down here. Mine's all the way down to secret knowledge right here. <coughs> you can go into your boards file and name this whatever you want, whatever you like, but this is a pretty good name. Uh, and so we'll just go ahead and try and program it. Um, it's on the system. We'll, we'll even change it a little bit. We'll change it to bin 6 because that will actually work on this kind of level. So this is the upload button, it actually puts it on the chip, this is the verify button. It is like, it's kind of like compiling or checking your code, um, so we'll, we'll verify it to make sure that it works. It's compiling it, yeah, okay, so it works, it's this big. Um, this is if, I guess, you're compiling something and it's taking forever and you're like, I don't want to do that, because it's taking too long, so you can stop. Pretty generic stuff. This is sort of the magic button. So we'll go ahead, we start the bootloader by pressing the button, which should cause the pin on the left side of the bottom part of the ship to, to start blinking. That means the bootloader is turned on. So pressed it, LED's blinking. Uh, I'll just hit this one. <coughs> and we get an error, which is okay. It's supposed to do that. This is by design. Yeah. So, so I saw a face, and that's very funny because um, a lot of times it'll be like, oh, the software is not working correctly. I'm like, oh, it was in the specifications. It's supposed to do that. And you're like, that's clearly a bug. Um, but this is just sort of an error that doesn't really matter. It's just confused because it sent a command to the bootloader that the bootloader is kind of like hacked together. And the bootloader didn't respond by saying, like, okay, you set the clock period. Um, so it gives you this error. However, as you can observe, it has worked. It is blinking. Blink, blink, blink. Um, so that's good. So that's how you program these things. If you continue to have problems, um, I will help you during the build time. Uh, I would prefer to help you today during the build time than <coughs> at random times during the week, because that's really hard for my schedule. Um, and the other thing is if you're running Windows, you will need to get the driver installer off of public where it currently resides because uh, Windows doesn't let you run your own drivers and you sort of just run from the <coughs> EXE. Um, so you need some like installer trickery to do that. And that also will modify your board's TXT for you. If you're on Windows, that's all you need to do. Um, can someone pass forward the extra sheets? Everett has two pieces of paper that have my name at the top of them. Yep. Everett has the magic sheet. Yep. Nope. Okay, so some people need these things. So if we could, I would like to copy this so I see what I wrote down, but I would say, and they can use copies so they also have this. So we have extras. 
Does the magic sheet on it? All assigned to it? 